We often buy food from the grocery store without much thought about how it's made. You might know something isn't good for you, but the look of it has you putting it in your cart anyway. There might even be food you had no idea was as complicated as it is. Well, you might be thinking twice about your purchases. From red food to illegal cheese, here are 20 foods you'll never buy again after knowing how they're made. Number 20. Nutella Nutella is often touted as a child's favorite spread for breakfast and lunch, but you'll never buy this again knowing how it's made. As child-friendly and nutritious as these jars of chocolatey goodness seem, they are anything but. It's easy to believe that Nutella is healthy because it's made with hazelnuts and contains a lot of natural ingredients, but it also contains a lot of unhealthy ingredients. According to Healthline, just two tablespoons of Nutella contains 200 calories, 12 grams of fat, and 21 grams of sugar. Sugar is listed as the first ingredient on the label, and that's because it is the primary ingredient. If you have more than two tablespoons, you're consuming huge amounts of fat and sugar in such a small amount of food that there's a risk of having more than the recommended daily amount. Nutella contains sugar, palm oil, hazelnuts, cocoa, skimmed milk powder, soy lecithin to stop ingredients from separating, and vanillin, which is a synthetic version of a flavor component from vanilla bean extract. It's a favorite in sandwiches and on toast, but also in desserts, ice creams, and other sweet treats. People love Nutella so much that the number of jars produced each year would be enough to circle the earth 1.8 times, according to the Nutella website. But after learning all this, will you buy it again? Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Jelly Beans Jelly beans are a delicious, sugary treat that many of us are pretty partial to when we want a quick energy hit. They are available in a wide variety of colors and flavors, and you can even purchase different brands. We all know jelly beans are full of sugar, but what if I was to tell you that each time you're biting into a jelly bean, you're also biting into insect secretions? While not true of all brands, there's every reason to believe that the shine you see on your jelly bean's outer coating comes courtesy of the lac bug. These bugs, from forests in India and Thailand, drink sap from trees and deposit shellac, a natural resin, onto branches and twigs. When they are harvested, they are processed into flakes and then dissolved in ethanol. The natural shellac is now in liquid form and can be used to give anything a shiny finish, including hardwood floors, fingernails, and, you guessed it, jelly beans. Many synthetic resins have now been made to replace lac bug shellac, but that's not true across all industries. The food industry still heavily relies on this natural form, which has even been used to replace the natural wax that features on apples before it's washed off. Number 18. Chewing Gum I guess no one really thought they were chewing something healthy when they popped a piece of gum into their mouth. After all, the food we eat is never as chewy as chewing gum, so there's clearly some kind of additive that's making it as chewy and sticky as it is. You may have never guessed what those ingredients are, though. First of all, we got a whole lot of softeners, sweeteners, and flavors. The gum base typically contains a type of latex sap from the sapodilla tree and often natural resin, food grade agar, care, or gotti. These are natural ingredients, but we also have a few synthetic options like synthetic resin, polyvinyl acetate, glycerol esters, and polyethylene. I mean, they don't sound great, but there's probably one ingredient you weren't expecting to learn was in your pack of gum, and that's an ingredient found in the wool of sheet, lanolin. Ah! Lanolin is a waxy secretion from the sheep's sebaceous glands located on their skin. It helps their wool become waterproof and is something we also put in lip balms, creams, and other beauty products. However, it often also forms part of the chewing base of gum, which may make you think twice about purchasing it again. Number 17. Tuna 
Research has shown that fish may lower your risk of heart disease, stroke, depression, cancer, obesity, and other health conditions. With this information in mind, you might be tempted to eat fish for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Tuna is often many people's fish of choice due to its convenience in canned form and variety of flavor options on the market. But before you load up your grocery cart with dozens of tins, it's essential to know you might just be poisoning your body. You aren't likely to get sick from consuming one can of tuna, but the FDA recommends keeping your consumption of white tuna to under 4 ounces per week and light tuna to under 12 ounces. But why? Well, because tuna contains high levels of metal that can be dangerous for human consumption. Tuna contains mercury, tin, lead, cadmium, and even arsenic. Too much of these metals and you may be at risk of metal poisoning, which can cause symptoms like fatigue, sore joints, digestive discomfort, loss of balance, blood sugar retention, and even severe health consequences like cancer and death. As affordable, delicious, and versatile as tuna is, you might now think twice about eating it and other fish every day. Number 16. Ice Cream you might be saying, oh, you're not going to ruin our beloved ice cream for us, are you? You bet your cotton socks I am. After learning what's in your standard tub of ice cream, you might be opting for a refreshing piece of fruit in the hot summer sun instead. It's never a good idea to read the ingredients list on the back of ice cream. There's something quite depressing about seeing a list of ingredients you can't pronounce, like tetrasodium pyrophosphate. But there's an ingredient that's not always listed on its own, but is quite often present, and that's propylene glycol. Propylene glycol is found in cosmetics, dog food, antifreeze, and many other everyday items. The last place you'd expect to see it is in your ice cream, though. This ingredient typically gets collectively listed under a section like artificial or natural flavors. Its role in ice cream is to stop the formation of ice crystals while it's in your freezer and make it more scoopable. The good news is it wouldn't be there if it weren't safe. The amount you actually consume is very little, and everything's in moderation, right? Still, it'll now be hard to shake the thought that you're eating something that shares ingredients with something you put in your car. Good luck. Number 15. Beer. If you're a beer drinker, you're probably already quite familiar with the ingredients contained within your average pint. There's water, barley, malt, hops, and a dash of yeast. But what about fish? Absolutely not, you might say, but you'd be wrong. Unless you're purchasing from a brewery that actively promotes a vegan or vegetarian beer, you may just find that your beloved brew is filtered through the bladder of a fish. Isinglass is a gelatin made using fish bladders that's been a common additive in small and large breweries since the 19th century to make beer more transparent and more aesthetically pleasing. is how it's used in beer. It is odorless and colorless, so most people don't know it's there. Before you'd spit your drink out, it's important to note that consumers are becoming very choosy. That's a good thing, because it means more breweries are deciding what's more important, beer clarity or giving fish their bladders back. Many are now choosing the latter. Vegans, vegetarians, and simply those who don't want fish in their beer now have the option to choose beer from breweries that don't include this absolutely unnecessary additive. Fortunately, that number is growing by the day. Number 14. Peanut Butter Peanut butter is a delicious addition to pretty much anything. It's sweet, it's savory, it's everything in between. But what you may not know is that in every sandwich you eat and every snack you include with this delicious spread, you're likely getting more than just peanuts. You might also be getting rat hair and insects. Some research has shown that in every 100 grams of peanut butter, there are at least 30 or more pieces of insect and one or more rodent hairs. The FDA calls these natural contaminants, and most people won't have any adverse health effects from consuming them. However, some people with allergies or asthma may have a reaction, with that reaction depending on the number of hairs and insects they consume. And if that's not bad enough, there's also the risk of aflatoxins or mycotoxins, which are soil fungus found throughout the world. Cotton seed, corn, and peanuts are the most affected by this fungus, and it can become metabolized by your liver and even become carcinogenic at high doses. High doses of aflatoxin have been thought to stunt growth in children. Who knew the average jar of peanut butter could be so risky? Number 13. Red Food most of us would prefer to have our food mainly containing natural ingredients with as few synthetic additives as possible. But what if those natural ingredients 
or bugs. I don't know which I'd prefer, really. The next time you purchase a red food item, take a look at the ingredient list. If it says something like Carmen, Natural Red 4, or Cochineal Extract, you're about to eat powdered bugs. Oh, goody. Cochineal extract comes from female cochineals, which are little slate bugs that feast on prickly pears in Mexico, South America, some parts of the United States, and the Canary Islands. <laughs> To harvest the bugs, manufacturers take prickly pear pads into factories, pull off the bugs, and process them. About 70,000 cochineals are needed to make just one pound or 0.45 kilograms of dye. There are now synthetic versions of the dye, but public demand for natural ingredients led many food and cosmetic manufacturers to make use of these bugs once more. Vegans, vegetarians, and some people with allergies actively look for this ingredient to ensure any red foods and products they're purchasing don't contain them. Number 12. Gelatin Gelatin is something you see on the ingredients list of many, many items like cosmetics, candy, yogurt, cake, and even ice cream. It even features in photographic film, some wines, and as coatings for capsules and vitamins. But have you ever thought about what gelatin actually is? It's pretty gross. Gelatin is a protein that we get by boiling down bones, ligaments, skin, and tendons. It's nearly tasteless, colorless, and has a yellowish coloring. Usually, we get it from cows and pigs when we're trying to achieve a jelly-like texture in products. Fortunately, more and more manufacturers are choosing to make sure vegans and vegetarians can use their products and eat their food. So they're swapping animal gelatin for agar agar, which is sometimes marketed as gelatin but comes from a type of seaweed. Most people don't have adverse reactions when they eat products containing gelatin, but that's not the case for everyone. Some people experience heartburn, belching, bloating, stomach discomfort, and even allergic reactions. Fortunately, our scientists are pretty intelligent and creative people, so food and products that previously contained gelatin made from animals now include more natural alternatives. Always check out that all-important ingredient list before you purchase anything. Number 11. Processed Meat I don't think any of us ever thought that processed meat, like hot dogs, for example, was healthy. Anything that's undergone preservation through smoking, salting, chemical preservative adding, or curing simply can't be good for your body. And you'd be right to assume that because they're not. Processed meats like bacon, hot dogs, and deli meats may increase your risk of cancer. Current research suggests that the chances of colorectal and stomach cancer from eating bacon and other cold cuts may be much higher than for someone who doesn't eat such products. Ham, hot dogs, pepperoni, roast beef and turkey, deli meats, sausage, and beef jerky may all be off the menu when you learn about just how damaging they can be for the cells in your colon and rectum. There are three chemicals in particular that seem to present the most risks. One is called heme, which is a pigment in red meat. Nitrites and nitrates in processed meat to keep it fresher may also be quite dangerous. When you cook meat at high temperatures, polycyclic amines and heterocyclic amines are produced, and these too can damage the cells in your rectum and and colon. I mean, the occasional hot dog at a sports game likely won't be a death sentence, but it may pay to lay off those daily jerky snacks. Number 10. Raw Oysters Raw oysters are a delicious delicacy that many people add to their shopping list once the warmer weather hits. Sure, they're delicious, but did you know they could also be dangerous? According to the FDA, raw oysters may be contaminated with a naturally occurring bacteria called Vibrio vulnificus, which is found in waters where oysters are cultivated, such as the Gulf of Mexico. Generally, higher concentrations of this bacteria are found during summer when the water warms up. While most people won't have an issue, eating raw oysters can be a severe health risk for high-risk people like those with medical conditions. Generally, symptoms of Vibrio vulnificus present themselves within one to two days of ingestion. You might feel a sudden chill and experience a fever. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, skin lesions, and shock often follow. People with liver diseases, diabetes, cancer, or other serious health conditions can die from the infection within just a couple of days, which means seeking medical help early on can be crucial. Some people who are aware of this bacteria believe that hot sauce or lime juice can kill it, but that's not the case. The only way to destroy the bacteria is by heating it, which means thoroughly cooking oysters can be your best form of protection against illness. Number 9. Pringles 
You didn't just think potatoes were cleverly cut into their stackable design, did you? Oh no, no, no. Pringles and other brands you purchase in tubes may not be as innocent as they seem. Moorish, definitely, but healthy? Absolutely not. Rumor has it that the Pringles company was trying to avoid taxes levied against junk and luxury foods by saying that the potato content of their chips was so low that technically they weren't potato chips at all. Instead, they're a combination of rice, wheat, corn, and potato flakes mixed together and pressed into shape. The resultant dough is rolled into one long, thin potato chip sheet before being cut to shape, pressed into molds, moved through boiling oil, dried, and then sprayed with powdered flavors. They then end up in cans before we squeeze our fists into them and grab handfuls of them out. There's actually a cancer-causing chemicals in potato chips, not just in Pringles, that we're best to avoid. It's not intentionally added, but instead comes about through specific processing methods. Acrylamide is a potentially neurotoxic and cancer-causing chemical that forms at high temperatures when carb-rich foods are baked, fried, roasted, or toasted. French fries and potato chips are among the worst, but basically any carbohydrate-rich food cooked at temperatures above 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit may contain acrylamide. Number 8. The Illegal Maggot Cheese even if you're the biggest cheese fan and don't mind whether it's blue, fruity, nutty, or plain, you might just draw the line at Kasu Marsu, also called maggot cheese. It's basically as described, cheese that contains maggots. This awful cheese is made by shepherds on the Italian island of Sardinia, and the Guinness World Record called it the world's most dangerous cheese in 2009. They weren't even exaggerating, this cheese is so dangerous that it's actually illegal. How it's made is genuinely quite stomach-turning. Cheese skipper flies called Piofila Cassi lay eggs in cracks that form in the cheese. On this island, the standard cheese of choice is Fiore Sardo, which is a salty pecorino. Maggots hatch, digest proteins, and then turn the cheese into a soft, creamy variety. Once this process has taken place, the cheesemonger takes the top off and scoops out the creamy interior. It's at this point that you'll notice the cheese is moving. It is literally filled with maggots. Some cheesemongers, and I love that, can I be a voice monger? Will spin the cheese through a centrifuge to blend the maggots in with the cheese, while others eat them as they come. It is banned for commercial sale, but Sardinians have been eating it for centuries. I think I'll stick to highly processed cheddar, thanks. Number 7. Kopi Luwak Coffee Fancy a cup of hot coffee? You should check the origins first. If you've opened a fresh bag of Kopi Luwak Coffee, you might be eating cat poo. Okay, so it's a bit classier than that, but not by much. Kopi Luwak is coffee consisting of partially digested coffee cherries. By the time they end up in your beverage, they may have been eaten and defecated by the Asian palm civet, also known as the toddy cat and musang, a cat-like creature from South and Southeast Asia. As the cherries pass through the animal's intestines, they are fermented. Once defecated, they are collected and sold. Surprisingly, it's one of the most expensive coffees in the world, with a retail price of up to $100 per kilogram for farmed beans and $1,300 for wild collected beans. This type of coffee is mainly produced in East Timor and on Indonesian islands like Bali, Sulawesi, Sumatra, and Java. It's also not uncommon for them to be gathered or produced on islands of the Philippines. The unfortunate reality is that the high cost of this coffee has made people trap Asian palm civets and keep them in battery cages to force feed them the cherries. If the idea of drinking animal poo doesn't put you off purchasing Kopi Luwak, this practice should. Number 6. Cheese in a Can if you live outside of the U.S., you've probably raised an eyebrow every time you've seen an American haul out their can of cheese and proceed to spray it on a cracker. Cheese in a can is absurd, and I doubt anyone will argue that point. Aside from the fact that it doesn't even look real or taste real, there's that daunting list of ingredients on the can that basically prove it's not real cheese. One of the most horrific ingredients you might see on your own cheese in a can is sodium phosphate. It stops the many different components in cheese from separating, but isn't actually all that great for us. It can make our urine incredibly acidic, which is uncomfortable, and can even lead to kidney disease and renal failure. Then there's the sodium citrate, which stops the cheese from becoming clumpy. It does this job well, but it is acidic, which may cause tooth erosion. 
The worst is yet to come. Take note of the mention of sorbic acid. Your cheese will remain free of mold for far longer than nature intended, but may cause a rash and other severe side effects if you're allergic to it. Anyone with any knowledge of nutrition basically tells us to stay away from canned cheese. It tends to contain more unnatural, processed, and chemical ingredients than natural ones, which means that while it is convenient, it is far from good for you. Number 5. Coal Tar Dyes Coal tar dyes are a byproduct of hydrocarbon solvents. They dilute bituminous coal, which is used in steel making. Once diluted, you get coal tar dye in a variety of colors. While many of them are considered unsafe for food, you can still find them in food products and a wide range of cosmetics like lipsticks. Coal tar dyes also contain heavy metals like aluminum, which when consumed continuously over time may cause brain damage and speed up the progression of brain diseases such as Alzheimer's. Surprisingly, a lot of processed food on our shelves still contain coal tar dyes to give them their coloring. Potato chips, colorful drinks, and candy, just to name a few, may have this harmful additive just to make them aesthetically pleasing. Some studies have shown that concentration levels may be affected in people who consume food with coal tar dyes and that cutting them out was able to reduce ADHD symptoms in some cases. And it's not just us that are suffering, so is the environment. The dyes contain heavy metals and chemical solvents which can bioaccumulate. This means that they can build up in aquatic creatures like fish before being consumed by birds. The next time you reach for something that's been artificially covered, take a moment to do your research and see whether the manufacturer has sneakily added coal tar dyes. You just never know. Number 4. Cinnamon Cinnamon is a delicious spice from Sri Lanka and other parts of the world that consists of dried inner bark from the bushy evergreen tree of the laurel family. Harvesters cut the shoots close to the ground, scrape them with a blade, then rub them with a brass rod to loosen the bark. The bark is then split and peeled, and after drying, is rolled on a board and further dried before being bleached with sulfur dioxide and sorted into grades. It's popular in a variety of cultures and features heavily in baked goods, beverages, curries, perfumes, and even essential oils and liquors. But before you add cinnamon to your shopping cart to whip up some apple and cinnamon muffins, take a moment to consider whether you want to be eating insects. It is thinner and it's smooth, right? Brown cinnamon can contain up to 400 insect fragments per 50 grams, and the average jar of cinnamon you purchase from your local grocery store holds around 42 grams. So without a doubt, you are eating insect pieces every time you flavor something with cinnamon. It sounds gross, and it is, but the FDA is okay with it. Heads, legs, and other insect fragments are commonly allowed in food as natural contaminants. They just frown upon most foods containing whole insects. Number 3. Mad Honey Mad Honey. It sounds like the byproduct of angry bees, but it is much, much worse. If you consume honey containing grayanotoxins from plants like rhododendrons, you may end up with mad honey poisoning that has some awful side effects. Grayanotoxins are neurotoxins affecting your muscles and nerves. You might experience weakness, dizziness, hypersalivation, excessive perspiration, nausea, vomiting, and paresthesia. Some people also experience low blood pressure and shock in extreme cases. Honey can also contain Clostridium botulinum spores, which can result in botulism. So even though honey is delicious and nutritious, it is not altogether safe. Typically, honey from the Black Sea area of Turkey is known to produce the most cases of mad honey poisoning due to the high concentration of rhododendron flowers in the area at specific times of the year. However, it's also been reported in other countries. If you notice that your honey has caused a burning sensation in your throat or it has an astringent or bitter taste, throw it out as it might contain grayanotoxins. When in doubt, research the flavors used to produce the type of honey that you're about to purchase to be on the safe side. Number 2. Goat Stomach Cheese If you are offered Andalusian goat milk cheese to go with your wine or crackers, don't answer right away. Hesitate and see if you're willing to risk eating something that has been made with the stomach of a goat or lamb. Traditional Andalusian goat milk cheese and some other cheeses are made with rennet, which curdles it. Rennet is not something they just buy off the shelf of their local grocery store, though. Instead, they remove the stomach of a freshly killed suckling lamb or kid, one they've made sure hasn't had any grass or solid food. 
They then tie the opening of the stomach, roll it in ashes to coat it evenly, then hang it to dry out of the direct sun. Generally, the drying process takes place in the shade of a grape arbor or hanging from the roof beams of a cottage. Once the stomach has dried, the milk left within it would be a brown powder. Some of this powder is pulverized in a mortar with water to make it a paste before being thinned with even more water. Eventually, it's added to warm goat's milk and a thickening solution to start the cheese making process. More or less rennet is used to produce hard or soft cheese. So basically, rotten milk dust from the stomach of a baby animal is used to make cheese. How delightful. Number 1. Black Ivory Coffee if you drink coffee, you've probably got your preferences. You'll likely stick to specific brands and choose the same option at your local cafe since you know what you like. But the owner of Black Ivory Coffee Company is trying to get people to step outside of their comfort zones. Canadian entrepreneur Blake Dinkin produces coffee similarly to Kopi Lewick. He selects 100% Thai Arabica cherries from high altitudes, mixes them with elephants' favorite foods like tamarind, rice, and bananas, and feeds the elephants. Then he waits. Once the digestive process is complete within three days, they are hand-picked from the elephant poop, washed, raked, and then sun-dried before being hulled and machine-sorted and finally brewed into coffee. Yeah, do you agree? Okay. One kilogram of black ivory coffee comes from about 33 kilograms of coffee cherries, and the resultant coffee is unlike anything you would have had before. I mean, how many people can say their coffee has been picked out of elephant poo? Apparently, the flavor of the coffee is out of this world, with notes of spice, chocolate, grass, tobacco, and leather. It is delicate, tea-like, and not bitter at all. I think I'll just take their word for it. I am shocked, dismayed, appalled, and all of the above. Who knew these manufacturing processes and ingredients were such common practice and commonplace? Were you unaware of any of the things we've mentioned? Are you put off purchasing any of the products? I'm in no hurry to buy tuna, that's for sure. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!